Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so this is my fourth video on Pell's equation and in my first video I said I'd make at least uh, three videos. So at least uh, was a good insert and in that first video I showed you how to solve um, equations of this form which are Pell's equation and um, I also showed you uh, how to uh, construct more solutions given a solution XY. So if you have one solution XY to this equation, I showed you how you can make more solutions. And I even showed you uh, how to prove the method of making more solutions. So check out my other videos, my first uh, three videos for all that. And um, but yeah, in this video, we're going to um, just focus on solving equations of this form, which are called generalized Pell equations. So um, as opposed to requiring that n be equal to one, uh, in this video, we're going to allow n to be different from one. In particular, uh, towards the end of this video, I'm going to give you an example of how to solve uh, x squared minus 6y squared is equal to 3, which turns out to be uh, an interesting generalized Pell equation because um, solving this uh, is somehow related to finding a and b so that a squared uh, plus a plus 1 squared um, is equal to uh, b squared uh, plus um, b plus 1 squared um, and then plus b plus 2 squared. So somehow solving uh, this generalized Pell equation is related to finding a and b so that this is equal to this. And this will be uh, what my next and final video will be dedicated to showing how solutions to this are related to uh, this equation uh, here with a and b. Yeah. Okay, cool. So look out for that video. But yeah, um, in this video, as I said, we're just going to talk about how to uh, solve uh, generalized Pell, Pell's equations. Um, well, so, so, you know, well, I shouldn't have deleted that. Let's take it. So like, say we're trying to solve this equation, right? So as we did in my very first video, one thing we can do is uh, get a first a solution by writing that x squared is equal to 6y squared plus 3. And then uh, since we're seeking integer solutions, we can start with y equals 1 and keep trying. Now here we don't have to try uh, too many because y equals 1 works. When y equals 1, we'll get x squared is equal to 6 plus 3, which is 9. So x is equal to 3. And uh, so then one solution uh, to the equation x squared minus 6y squared equals 3 is uh, just 3 comma 1. Nice. Now, if you want to make more solutions uh, to this equation, it turns out that what you have to do is um, take a solution. So take one solution of this equation and then find a solution to um, x squared minus 6y squared equals 1. So you change this 3 into a 1 and then find a solution. But because of our earlier discussion, we know that um, a solution of this, or actually we didn't mention this equation in particular. We looked at x squared minus 2y squared equals 1. But I don't think we ever solved this equation. But yeah, so like if we just like use the method we used on the right, then uh, we can find a solution by trial. But yeah, uh, once you find a solution to this, if you want more solutions to this, um, so we once you find this, if you want more solutions to this, then what you need to do is look at this equation where you change that 3 into a 1 and find a solution. And I'll tell you what you do after. So um, let's say x squared equals 6y squared plus 1 so that we can find a solution to this. And so by trying different values of y, we see that if we let y equal 2, then we'll have x squared equaling uh, 6 times 2 squared, so 6 times 4, 24, plus 1, which is 25. Therefore, uh, x equals 5, and we've got a solution, uh, 5 comma 2 to this equation. Okay, now what? Well, now that we've got a solution to this, and we've got a solution to this, um, what we're going to do is write alpha as equal to uh, 3 plus uh, 1 times root 6, um, and so that's that's this 3 and that's that 1 and we got the root 6 because of that. Remember, uh, when we're solving equations of this form, we said that uh, if uh, x comma y is a solution, to find more solutions, what you have to do is set alpha equal to x plus y root d and then 
uh, look at powers of alpha, so integer powers of alpha, and then we said like uh, we said that if we agree that for a number of this form uh, that this guy and this guy are called coefficients, then what we said is that alpha to the n, uh, because uh, these kind of numbers are closed under multiplication, alpha to the n will also be a number of the form a plus b root d, and then we said that the coefficients a and b, therefore the number that it appear there and there, uh, would make a pair x, y that would also solve this equation. And that's kind of the same idea that we're doing here. Not kind of, it is the same idea that we're doing here. So, um, like I said, uh, to solve uh, or to find more solutions to this, first find one solution to this, and then find a solution to this, where that 3 is changed into a 1, and then from them, uh, write alpha is equal to uh, this number plus this number times root d, uh, whatever d may be uh, right here. And in this case, obviously, it's 6, so uh, 3 plus 1 root 6. And then write alpha prime, or if you want beta, beta is equal to, um, and then for this other guy, we're going to write beta is equal to 5 plus um, 2 root 6, 5 plus 2 root 6, and then now we can make a third solution by multiplying alpha and beta. So you find a solution to this, and then you find a solution to this, and write both solutions in the form a plus b root d, right? Or x plus y root d, if the solutions are called x, y in each case. And then multiply those two solutions, and you make a new solution to this. Yeah? Okay. Um, first, let's uh, actually see this in action, and then... Um, if uh, you want, I'll prove it in uh, the remainder of the video why this has got to work. And because it's a similar proof to the construction, the proof of the, uh, how we construct uh, more solutions to equations of this form, some of you that have already seen that might find it boring. So you could just like stop watching the video as soon as I show you that alpha times beta is a solution. But uh, for those of you that are curious, I'll, um, so I'll, I'll prove why this method works, this method of construction works in general uh, to solve equations of this form. All right, cool, cool. So first, alpha times beta is going to say 3 plus uh, 1 root 6, so I'll just write root 6, uh, times 5 plus uh, 2 root 6, and that's going to say uh, 15 uh, plus uh, 6 root 6 plus 5 root 6, and then plus 2 times root 6 times root 6, so that's 2 times 6, so plus 12. And so that's going to make 27 uh, plus 11 root 6, from which we gather that 27 uh, comma 11 has to be a solution to uh, has to be a solution to this equation. Is it? Let's see. 27 squared. I don't actually want to check. I don't know what 27 squared is, and um, I guess I could kind of like cheat. I have a calculator handy, so yeah, fine. I'll use my calculator. So. Uh, 27 squared is 729, so it looks like we've got uh, 729 uh, minus 6 times 11 squared is 121. Uh, does that equal 3? Let's see. Um, 729 and then, uh, no, sorry, 729 and then minus, what's 6 times 121? That's 726. Uh, 726 and that does equal 3. Yeah? Okay, cool. But obviously, this isn't a proof. Like I said, uh, the rest of the video is going to be uh, the proof of why this works. So um, if you're satisfied already, then um, feel free to uh, turn me off. But otherwise, um, stay tuned for why this works. So what we said is in order uh, to find more solutions to this, um, once you have a solution x comma y, right, uh, we said... First, write alpha is equal to uh, x plus uh, y root d. And then find a solution to this. Uh, and let's say that the solution to this is um, x uh, prime comma y prime. Then we said write a beta, uh, write a beta equal to uh, x prime plus uh, y prime root d. And we said now alpha times beta will be a solution to this, an additional solution to this. We already had this, and we said alpha times beta 
well, we'll have coefficients. And I've already talked about what coefficients mean. This guy and this guy. And we're saying that the coefficients of alpha times beta uh, will make a pair uh, x comma y that will, um, that will solve this equation. Okay, let's see if that's in fact true. All right, so um, let me put my calculator away first. Notice that saying that um, this solves this uh, is the same thing as saying that um, x uh, prime squared minus uh, d uh, times um, d times uh, y prime squared is equal to one, right? That's what saying this is a solution to that means that this has got to be true, right? Okay, cool. And saying this is a solution to this means that this has got to be true, right? Okay, cool, cool. And then we've got our alpha and beta written in this way. And so now we're going to multiply alpha and beta. Now, alpha and beta are um, multiplied, uh, give us x plus uh, y root d. And I'm going to skip some details in writing the... Um, result here of alpha times beta but because yeah we've done this before uh, in a different video and also like this is pretty straightforward so we should have um, alpha times beta uh, give us um, it should give us x x prime um, and then and then x x prime and then plus y y prime d and uh, so that's going to be the first coefficient and then plus so I guess we can put it in its own parentheses plus, and it will be plus um, x uh, y prime plus x prime uh, y root d. And so what we're saying is uh, now in the product alpha times beta, this comma this will be a solution to this, an additional solution. We already had this guy, but yeah, now we're saying this comma this will be an x comma y that will solve this guy. All right, let's see. Is that true? Well, if they do, in fact, solve it as it's claimed, we can plug in this guy for x, and then we can plug in this guy for y and show that we get an n, uh, right, uh, in this equation, right? Okay, let's try it. So that would mean we have... Um, all right, quick, quickly. Uh, we have this squared, and then uh, minus, and then... Um, d times and then it's uh, right we need this to equal n okay uh, and I need the space so okay so what next well this expanded will be um, x squared, x bar squared, and then plus 2x, I said x bar, I meant x prime, you get it, you get it, and y, y prime, d, right, and then plus y squared, y prime squared, d squared, and then uh, if I expand this and at the same time distribute this negative d, I'll have to write uh, first, I'll have to write um, minus um, x squared um, and then y prime squared and then uh, d, right? And then it will be um, minus uh, 2 times x, x prime, y, y prime, uh, d. And then it will be uh, minus, it will be x prime squared. Uh, y squared and then uh, times D and we're asking does this equal does this equal n okay let's see first we have some help which is that this is identical to that but they're different in sign so they cancel and then uh, we're gonna group this guy and this guy together because they both have x squared so um, we have x um, squared and then times x bar squared and then minus um, x squared uh, times y prime squared d. I said x bar again, but whatever, whatever, you get it. And then, um, well, I'm going to next write this and then write this guy last. So we'll have minus um, x prime, sorry, 
guys, that x minus x prime squared y squared d, and then uh, plus y squared y prime squared d squared is equal to n. That's the question. Well, here uh, from uh, that group of two terms, we can factor out an x squared, and when we do, we're left with um, x prime squared and then minus uh, y prime squared uh, times d, right? Okay. And um, then uh, from this group of two, we're going to uh, factor out a minus uh, y squared d, and when we do, we have x prime squared uh, plus, um, plus, and then it's going to be uh, well, it's not going to be plus, it's going to be minus because we factored out uh, a negative y d squared from uh, this term and that term, right? Okay, so it's going to be minus, and what is it? Minus uh, d and then uh, y prime squared. Does this equal n? Well, now this here, right, is uh, this here, right? It's identical. I just wrote the d at the end as opposed to in front of uh, the y prime squared, but it's the same thing. And we know then, because this is a solution to this, that uh, this will have to equal 1, okay? And for th because it's identical, this, this will have to be 1 also. And therefore, what do we have left? We have x squared times 1, so x squared, minus uh, d times y squared, and that's that right there and times one, well, so just itself. And does that equal n? Yes, because from the get-go, x comma y was a solution to this, and therefore we'd said that this would have to equal n, and therefore this would have to equal n. Yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so this is it, and um, yeah, my final video again will be showing why, um, why uh, solutions to, solutions to um, x squared, um, yeah, you heard me say this already. So yeah, watch the next and final video. Take care.